lot of scientists who just want to understand the world we live in, who delve deep into the microscopic mechanisms that power brain cells, who send telescopes into space to witness the birth of new stars, who investigate, relate, and celebrate the exquisite intricacies of our universe. And that's an awesome thing. I also know a lot of scientists who passionately believe the work they do will one day make the world a better place, whether by curing a disease, sustainably feeding a growing population, or saving an ecosystem. Unfortunately for them, and for us, the path between scientific discovery and impact on the world, though never straightforward, is more complicated than ever. But in part, the reason for this is an artificial separation between basic and applied scientists. Basic research happens in universities and academic institutes, where applied R&D is the domain of industry. The transition between one and the other is a challenge. The incentives that spur academic achievements don't necessarily create the best inputs for commercial development. So what can we do to break down this barrier between the laboratory and the economy? I believe we need to empower a growing cadre of scientists who want to create their own companies to take the fruits of their labor directly into society as entrepreneurs. Scientists and entrepreneurs share many of the same characteristics, though they may seem polar opposites. In their best incarnations, they're both visionary, driven, creative problem solvers. Both lead teams who believe in their vision, and both attract outside financial support. Almost by definition, both scientists and entrepreneurs boldly go where no man has gone before. Historically, scientists entrepreneurs have made a huge impact. You may never have heard of Herb Boyer, but I think you've heard of Genentech, the company he founded. You may not know who Carl Gerasi is, but I think you've probably heard of the oral contraceptive. Edwin Land and Polaroid brought us new ways to capture and preserve visual images. Ray Dolby brought us Dolby Sound. These were intrepid, unique individuals, and we can't recreate their paths. But what we can do is empower budding scientist entrepreneurs to take the somewhat perilous leap into a non-traditional career. We can validate that choice, we can support and incentivize them. In particular, there are three things we can do. We can provide them with mentorship, with resources, and, of course, money. Happily, I am not alone in this realization. First, mentorship. New programs in universities, in, uh, supported by, by government uh, organizations, are allowing scientists the opportunity to test the buoyancy of their technologies in commercial waters. A variety of business plan competitions allow scientists to pitch their ideas for feedback and sometimes seed capital. And new ex breeds of accelerators are providing scientist entrepreneurs the tools they need to attract investors and outside partners. Second, resources. Small companies need no longer build brick-and-mortar infrastructure, infrastructure to make cutting-edge advances. Technology-specific incubators, whether for synthetic biology, for drug development, for robotics, are allowing scientist entrepreneurs to validate, test, and prototype their, idea, their ideas. Contract research organizations allow scientist entrepreneurs to outsource commonly uh, done experiments. It really is possible to build a biotech in your garage. Finally, always, money. Um, People talk about the valley of death that separates basic research from investor-backed startups. Government, the government has grants that go to small businesses through its research arms. 
But now foundations and nonprofits are finding ways to put much needed early stage capital into for profit companies as the most efficient effectors of technological change. Family offices of wealthy individuals are providing much needed angel capital. And finally, new models of crowdfunding allow all of us to tap and support our collective wish for innovation. Venture capitalists have long looked askance at funding a company with a scientist as CEO. This is changing. Just as researchers can be better scientists for being in touch with the market, business people can be better CEOs for being on the front lines of scientific truths. Imagine a world where the most ambitious entrepreneurs are not focused on making the next app, but are harnessing new biology and new materials to the service of humanity. Scientist entrepreneurs who are working on curing aging or traveling to the stars. I am thrilled and privileged to support this new generation of scientist entrepreneurs build our future. Thank you. <laughs>